Okay, we're going to continue onward now looking at how to calculate a feed-forward net neural network. We saw how to calculate a small part of a neural network in the last section. In this section, we're going to see how to calculate an entire neural network, and we're going to see how that process that we saw before is just repeated over and over again. For this neural network, we're going to have, it's going to be an exclusive OR type neural network. We're going to have input 1, input 2, and then we're going to have a bias neuron up here that's going to also feed into the next layer. So these are all of the neurons that we're actually dealing with, at least at this layer. Now it's going to accept input into the input and 1 and 2. The bias is always going to have an input of 1, which is just like we've seen before. We're going to try to use exclusive OR, so we're going to represent, we're going to give the neural network an input of 0 and 1, and we're going to see what the output would be calculated as. Now in the last section, we saw that we were able to calculate the output from a configuration such as this, and it would go into a output neuron. Well, in this case, the output neuron is going to be the input for the first hidden neuron. So you've got one hidden neuron there that is going to receive input from those. You're also going to have, now this, this whole area right here, this is what we saw last time. So we saw two inputs and one bias being fed in. What's really neat about this is it just repeats. So we're going to have a second hidden neuron, hidden 2, hidden 2 is going to receive input from I1, from I2, and also from the bias. So here we have a total of six weights so far as we are looking at the values coming into hidden neuron 1 and hidden neuron 2. Now before we take a look at the output to this neural network, let's also add in the bias neuron that we need here. We'll just call this bias 2. It really doesn't interact with this layer, but it is going to feed into the next layer. So there's our second bias neuron. Now let's look at the final layer, which is going to be the output layer. So finally, this neural network is going to result in O1, output 1. There's only one output. And it is also going to have three inputs from hidden 1 from hidden 2, and from the bias neuron. So that's also a total of three connection weights. So therefore, this entire neural network has nine connections. Now we're going to calculate its output using exactly what we did before. We're just going to do it three times. We need to do it once to calculate the input or the value of hidden 1, then we're going to do it a second time, calculate the value of hidden 2 using those two, hidden 1 and hidden 2 as the inputs, we're going to calculate the value for the output, and that will be the output of the entire neural network. So now let's look at the total number, or all of these weights together. Like I said, we have nine weights, so let's number them. Here's a weight, 1, 2, and 3. 
So those are the first three weights in the neural network. They are the weights that are from the hidden layer to the output layer. So now let's lumber the next weights. The next weights are going to be hidden ones weights coming into it. So all of the green arrows. So this is going to be weight number four. This green one here is going to be weight number five and weight number six. Next we're going to number the weights in the hidden layer, the hidden neuron two. And these are all of the blue lines. So that's going to be weight seven right there. That blue line there is going to be weight eight. And this blue line here is going to be weight nine. So those are all nine of the weights in the neural network. Now we're going to take a look at what values we want to actually assign to these weights. So we're going to have the weight and then the actual value. So we need to know the weight and the value in order to actually calculate those. Now we have a total of nine weights, so we'll write them in here. and nine. And these values, I'm going to put values that I actually calculated while training the neural network. We're going to see how to train neural networks later. Right now we just want to see what they output. But I'm going to enter actual values that were calculated or trained to know how to produce the output for a, for the XOR operator. Let's look at the first three values. The first three values are going to be 10. Now again, weights do not have to be between 0 or 0 and 1 or negative 1 and 1 like the inputs to the neural network should be. The second one is going to also be 10. And the third one is going to be negative 5. So that is this section. That is the first, that's the first three, the three to the output neuron. So this first one is hidden one to output one. Second one is hidden two to output one. The third is bias to, to output one. And that is also the first group, the first iteration of that, of the fundamental equation that we saw in the next, in the previous section. So that's the connection that it actually has. Now I am going to time lapse it real quick and fill in the other values. And there you see all of the weights that I have trained the neural network for. Now the output from training usually has decimal places for the weights. I have, I have simplified the values for each of these weights and the values you see really in this, in this column here. Now the first group here, this group, notice it's always the connection to O1. This is how we calculate the output neuron 1. The next group is always ending in H1. So this is where we are calculating the value for the first hidden neuron. And then also we are looking at this last group, and this last group is really how we are calculating the value for hidden two. And we are also using the sigmoid activation function 
on all of the layers. That's important to know because we need to use the sigmoid activation function in our calculation. So now we are going to calculate, we're going to find the value for hidden 1 and hidden 2 using the equation twice, and then we're going to take those two output values and we're going to feed that into the equation to calculate output 1. So now let's calculate the value for the first hidden neuron, H1. H1 is going to be equal to the activation function, whatever that activation function is. In this case, the activation function is the sigmoid function, as I mentioned previously. And it is going to be basically input 1, It's going to be these values here using weights 4, 5, and 6. So we're going to look at the value of input 1 times weight 4. That plus, that's a plus the value of input 2 times weight 5 and then plus the value of weight 6. Now it's really weight 6 times the value of bias 1, but bias 1 is always going to be 1, so 1 times anything is itself, so we simply just add weight 6 onto this. And that is the entire thing passed into the activation function. So if we write this out with our actual values, and again that's just a review from the last section, that was the equation that we saw that's the, sort of the fundamental equation. And we add terms to this if we had additional inputs. So if we had 5, we're going to be 5 inputs. We would be taking those inputs times their respective weights. But let's look at what the actual values would be. Again, this is going to be the activation function. Input 1 is a 0. So 0 times anything is 0, so this first term we don't even really care about. Input 2 is, I'll write it up just to, just for clarity, but that is going to be 0 times weight 4. And that term is going to basically drop out. Then we're going to add input 2, and input 2 is 1, so it's going to be 1 times the weight 5 value, which is a negative 6, so this whole term is negative 6, plus the weight 6 value, the bias, which is going to be negative 3, and then the activation, feed that whole thing into the activation. So even further simplified, this is going to be hidden 1 equals the activation function of negative 6 minus 3. Which is going to be equal to 0 0.88. Now let's look at the other values. 
We also see the value calculated for h2, and then when we run the whole thing through the same equation again, output 1 is 0 0.98, which is close to 1, which is consistent with the exclusive OR.